Well, the topic today is on end times, when Christ finally returns. And what's interesting is, and I'm going to touch on this, um, all of you are by now probably aware of what took place on Friday. Uh, and certainly what took place on Friday isn't something that's new, um, but it is a reminder. And so as I was looking through and, and preparing and just reflecting on this whole week, I find it very timely that our text is on helping us think about what is ultimately going to happen in this world. I found a, a message, a sermon from a fellow pastor that I was blessed to serve with many years ago. Uh, this sermon title and then kind of following bio was uh, written 18 years ago. I was at that worship service, and this is what he wrote. 18 years ago. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about the end times. Everything that I have is so precious, so necessary. It's all going to end. It's going to go away. Maybe that's why Jesus' ministry spent so much time preparing his hearers for the end. I don't want to let go of what I hold on to so tight. I don't want to put it all in perspective. How do I live with the end in sight? So as I mentioned, it, it would be a shame on me to not reference or not talk about what took place on Friday. I don't know uh, where all of you were. I don't know what was happening. But for me, I uh, had just walked into the police station. I uh, was gathered together with one more men for lineup, and then they had the flat screen TV on. And I looked up and I saw that there was something pretty big and they go, you didn't hear about what happened? And I said, no. And he said, they said, well, there was a terrorist attack in Paris. And then as I began to gather more and, and hear about things, it became very clear. Planned terror in Paris. And the thing I want you to hear on this, and as I mentioned it a moment ago, there is without a doubt these kinds of things that have happened and are going to happen. In particular, as you all know, this was by ISIS, right? And it's tied in with Islam. And what's scary is, when we think about this, is that we know that this could happen anywhere. It could happen today. It could happen in our country. It's happening throughout the world. There are people that just want to kill us for a whole variety of different reasons. I was gathering together with a number of Brothers, the couple of weeks ago for Oktoberfest. And as I gathered together for Oktoberfest, I was sitting at a table, and there was this one gentleman in particular who was at this table who kept talking about the end of time. And he was really trying to drive it home to everybody who was there. And one of his comments was, You need to all know that the world's going to end. There's an asteroid that's coming out there. It's going to end. You better be prepared. And then he started talking about the book of Revelation. He said, is everybody reading the book of Revelation? And then he found out I was a pastor. He said, you need to tell your members to read the book of Revelation. And I said, well, yeah, I wanted to read the book of Revelation. I wanted to read all scriptures. He's like, no, you've got to tell them to read the book of Revelation. Because if they read that book, they're going to be more blessed and more holy. And I said, well, where does it say that? He didn't give me an answer. I said, isn't all of Scripture God breathed and inspired? Isn't it all of it what's going to guide us? And they just, no, it has to be revelation. The Scriptures in our text today say that there's going to be false prophets. There's going to be people who lead us astray, who take our eyes off that which really matters. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, you know, I think the bottom line, especially when we're dealing with what's happening with Islam, is that this is indoctrinated. It's something that, that people learn from a very young age. They're taught it over and over. And I said, you know, you're right. A lot of it is taught. I said, but I think there's something more. I think it's more than just something that's taught. I think there's something wrong with us. I think there's something wrong with humanity. I share this because everybody has an opinion about what just took place. If you watch the news, you're going to hear a whole lot of opinions. If you talk to a family member or a friend, you're going to hear opinions about what took place. You're going to wonder, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to this world? What's, what's next? How are we going to work all of this out? And what I want you to hear is, 
that we need more than opinions. We need more than assumptions. When I talk to you, I want to know the truth. And I want you to know the truth. What's really going to happen in this world? Well, let's take a look at our gospel reading this morning. So why don't we turn back to the gospel and let's take a look at it. Now what's interesting, I don't know about you, is I was reading this with a friend the other day and I said, let's read the gospel together. And this individual hadn't read the gospel and I said, let's read it. And at the end of it, they went, that's really depressing. I said, yep, that's pretty depressing. It's pretty depressing. It is. But we got to deal with it. Because who's speaking these words? Jesus is. So what I'd like us to do is I'd like us to go to verse 5 when he sits down with the brothers and he shares these words. Say that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. Those of you who are older and have lived a good life know that there's been many who come saying, I'm a prophet, I'm a savior. The big one for me was back with David Koresh with the Branch Davidians down in Waco, Texas. A whole group of people who followed him and ended up dying. He said he was the Messiah. There's going to be men and women and people throughout the ages who are going to come and lead people away from the truth. I shared this this morning, and it's something that people don't want to hear. Muhammad led people from the truth. Muhammad is evil. And I could be in big trouble for saying those words. But he's leading people away from God. He's a false prophet. That's the truth. And Jesus said there will be false prophets, and Muhammad came after Jesus. So we need to be aware of that, and we need to make sure that we're grounded in the truth versus lies of this world. They want to lead people away from God. If you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars, don't be alarmed. They must take place. But the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That's been happening throughout the ages. Many of you have lived through wars. Many of you have been a part of wars. That is part of humanity. There's going to be earthquakes in various places. There's going to be famines. And yet, these are only the beginning of birth pains. The disciples who heard this went through exactly the very thing that it's talking about. Be on your guard. You're going to be delivered over to councils. The disciples were delivered before councils. You're going to be beaten in synagogues. That happened. That's happening now. I was talking to someone the other day. They said, in the Middle East, there's not going to be Christians there much longer. The Christians are being killed. People are dealing with this right now. The gospel, though, look at verse 10, must first be proclaimed to all nations. Is the gospel being proclaimed to all nations? Have all nations heard the gospel yet? I was talking with somebody the other day. They talked about the Mormons and Jehovah's Witness. They're out there, and they're knocking on doors, and they're sharing their belief system, and yet it's a false belief system, but they're out there. The scriptures say that we're to be the feet, the hands, to go and share the truth. And that the gospel has to be proclaimed to all nations before he comes. And when you have those opportunities, don't be afraid. Because the Holy Spirit is going to give you the very words that you need to say. I don't know if you had those moments. I know I've had them. There's been times where I've talked to people incredibly intelligent. And I'm not so smart. And yet somehow I was able to kind of talk with them. And I'm like, how did I do that? It's the Holy Spirit. Brother will deliver brother over to death. The father and his child, children will rise against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. Not only has that happened, that's continuing to happen. Why will we be hated for my name's sake? Why in this nation is it like politically incorrect to talk about Jesus, but okay to talk about other things? The reason is, is that, as the scriptures say, we were talking about it in Bible study, it's a spiritual battle. Satan hates Jesus Christ. 
Satan is opposed to everything that God stands for. And we stand for the truth. The evil one is out there that wants to pull us away from the truth. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Powerful words. So what do we do between now and then? How do we deal with this world that we live in that's so chaotic? How do we wrestle through these challenges that we're faced? What is, what is the ultimate answer? The ultimate answer is what we're going to read again in the, in the scriptures, that we're, we're to hang together, we're to keep our eyes on the cross, to know that Jesus entered into, and we're to stand in the truth. And, and not get worried about the things of the world that want to pull us away from the truth. And so let me just kind of sum this up with the truth. This is what we need to hear. Even though it's not easy, even though this gospel is a difficult lesson, what is the truth? The truth is this, and you know it, and you've heard it. This is a sinful world. It's broken. And it's not going to be fixed. Ever since Adam and Eve fell into sin, and if you look at the history, we will continue to hurt one another, be selfish, war against one another, and it isn't going to stop. And that's hard. But that's the truth. We are sinful. The other thing you need to know is that no government is going to be able to fix it. If the United States were to become a more Christian nation again, it isn't going to stop what's happening in the world. It isn't going to end. There's a passage in 1 Kings and 2 Kings where it talks about the people who are like, we want a government, we want, we want to be like the other nations. And, and the prophets are saying, don't do it, don't do it. You're going to, all these bad things are going to happen if you turn your lives over to the government. Keep your eyes on God. No, we don't want what God has to say. We want the government. We want the government. But everything bad is going to happen when you turn it over to the government. But we want the government. Okay, give them the government. Government isn't going to fix it. It's not going to stop the problems that we have. And no matter how hard I try, and no matter how hard you try, if it's about fixing it through my means, it's not going to change anything. The scriptures say that every inclination of the heart is evil all the time. The scripture says that no one is good, not even one. That everyone is turned away. That's the truth. But there is hope. And that hope is found in Jesus. Jesus came into this world to save the world. That is his. Jesus comes into the world and brings repentance and forgiveness of sins. Jesus said that we're to go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus said the gospel must be proclaimed to all nations. Jesus said make disciples by baptizing them. What brings the change is bringing people back into relationship with the one who created this. That's the solution. The solution is found in Christ and Christ alone, the one who lived a sinless life and restores humanity through a cross. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Jesus didn't come to set up an earthly kingdom. Jesus says that when he returns, all things will be made new, a new heaven and a new earth. This is going to end. And so between now and whatever that is, I keep my eyes on the cross and I live my life for the gospel. Did you hear it? It's in the epistle. It sums it all up. Look at verse 21 of Hebrews chapter 10. Since we have a great high priest, that high priest is Jesus, who is over the house of God, let us now draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That means that all of you who are here who are baptized, baptized, clothed in the righteousness of God, you don't have to fear. If today it's it, I'm okay. If it all ends today, it's fine. I'm going to be clothed with God's righteousness forever and ever in heaven, and so are you. Don't doubt that you are a baptized child. So verse 23, 
hold fast to this confession of hope without wavering. I keep my, my eyes on Jesus and I know Jesus endured all things. I can endure all things. Jesus was crucified to restore me. I can handle whatever comes my way. Because he who has promised is faithful. How is he faithful? He's God. God is faithful. God keeps his promises. God does exactly what needs to take place. Everything that's written in this book has been fulfilled and will be fulfilled. I can hold on to his promise in the face of any hardship or challenge that might come my way. He is faithful. So between now and that time, verse 24, may I consider how I might stir one another to love and to good works. How beautiful it is to love someone. Really love someone with Christ like unconditional love. And then get people to respond to that. My life is worth living the more I spend time loving people to the gospel. So, verse 25 praise God for the earth. Don't neglect to meet together as some in the habit of. I was sharing at the earlier service, those who haven't been here, give them a call. I need to do that too. I don't always do it as quick as I should. If you don't see someone, let them know I miss you, I care about you. How are you doing? What's going on in your life? We're to, we're to endure, we can get through this. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. There's great things in life. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And encourage, see it, encourage one another. All the more as we see days like Friday and more days like Friday that are going to happen. Keep encouraging each other. Jesus shall return. You're baptized. You will see Jesus. You have eternal life. You're not condemned. You have forgiveness of sins. Until the day draws near. And you shine like the brightness of the sky that is above. Finally, we talked about this at the earlier service. Bill Beard came up. We're going to go out next week. We're going to go into our communities. We're going to hand out this card to people in our neighborhoods. It's talking about our church. It's talking about friends. It's talking about caring about one another. It talks about the things we do here. On the back, it says, A friend who loves you unconditionally. A friend who's always there for you. A friend who knows what you're thinking, a friend who's on your side, someone who really listens, someone who tells the truth, someone who knew you from birth, a friend who died for you, connecting people to the ultimate friend, Jesus. We're going to go walk in neighborhoods and pray with people and talk with people and let them know the real truth about life. I hope you'll join us next Sunday. Let's close it. Lord, it's all going to end. About a month ago, I was sitting in the living room with a beautiful woman in her late 80s. Dear Lord, you know her name. She had tears in her eyes and she said, there's days I just want to go home. Is that okay, Pastor? Is that okay? And I looked at her and I smiled at her and I said, absolutely. Paul said to us, heaven, your kingdom is what awaits us. It's far better to be there, but until that time, you've called me to serve you. So those were my other words. Look forward to that day that we're all with you forever when you return or when we take that last breath and go to be with you. But between now and then, may we encourage one another. May we lift one another up. May we keep our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.